Hello friends. Today we will learn a smart way of counting duckling using Chinese remainder theorem. This is a nice problem or the great problem. So this is a problem from Batten's Carol's Fiction Math Land where brilliant duck is represented as a character which is very intelligent. She devised a quick way of counting her duckling which was basically a residue evaluation process after division separately by 5, 3 and 11. She knew that when counted by 5s, 2 ducklings remained. When counted by 3s, 2 ducklings remained again. And when counted by 11, 3 ducklings remained. What is the smallest possible number of ducklings she has? So, we will take as x. And that is x number is counted by 5 means when it is divided by 5, 2 ducklings remain means 2 is the remainder. When counted by 3, that means when divided by 3, 2 ducklings remain means 2 is the remainder. Again, when it is divided by 11, 3 is the remainder. You have to find the value of x. So, let the smallest possible number of ducklings be x. That means according to the question, x is congruent to 5 Sorry, the remainder is 2. So, it is your 2 when it is divided by 5 means modulo 5. Again, x is congruent to the remainder is 2 again here when it is divided by 3. So, modulo 3 and x is congruent to 3 when it is divided by 11, modulo 11. So, these are the three congruences. We have to solve it for x. And let us see if we can apply Chinese remainder theorem or not. We have to check 5 and 3. 3 and 11. And 5 and 11 are pairwise co-prime. Are pairwise so we can use Chinese remainder theorem there are three congruences we will prove we will solve this, find the value of x using Chinese remainder theorem. So, for Chinese remainder theorem, x is congruent to n1, x1, n1, a2. Since there are three, I am writing the formula to solve it. If you are new to this Chinese remainder theorem, I will suggest you please go through the video original that means that that is the basic of Chinese remainder theorem so that you will understand better. It is not that you, will, you can't understand, you will understand. Please watch it carefully or follow the steps what I am doing. So, modulo n. And n equals to n1, n2, n3. Just while solving the problem, if you will note it carefully, you can get it. So, first is, I am writing a1. a1 equals to 2. This one is a1. a2 is equal to again 2. This is a2. a3 
3 is equal to 3, this is your equilibrium. 3 is by 3. And this will be small n1, small n2, small n3. So n1 equals to 5, n2 equals to 3, and n3 equals to 11. Next, we'll get capital N1, N2, N3 by this formula. So here, N equal to N1 into N2 into N3. This will be 5 into 3 multiplies 11. That will be 165. So we got A1, A2, A3. We got to N, small N1, N2. Now, to take this capital N1, we this is same as your N over small n. So it will be 165 divided by 5. I am getting 33. N2 equals to again 165 divided by 3. That will be 155. And N3 equals to 165 divided by 11. That will be 15. So we got N1, N2, N3. Now coming to X1 x2, x3. How it is find out? It is find out in this way. A n1, x1 is congruent to 1 modular small n1. n2, x2 is congruent to 1 modular n2. And n3, x3 is congruent to 1 modulo n3. From this, we'll get your x1, x2, n3. So n1 is your 33. So I'll write 33. First, first congruence, 33 x1 is congruent to 1 modulo n1. n1 is your 5, 1 modulo 5. That means you have to think of the value of x1 so that when 33 into x1 is multiplied and divide with 5, it leaves remainder 1. So you can go for 1, 2, 3, 33 into 1, 33. When divides 5, it does not give remainder 1. Then 33 into 2, 66. 66 when divides with 5, 13, 5 times 65. So it leaves remainder 1. That means x1 equals to your 2. Next is n2 x2 that means 55 x2 is congruent to again 1 modulo 3. 55 into 1. 55 when divides with 3 it leaves remainder 1. 18, 3 times 54, it leaves remainder 1. That means x2 equals to 1. Next, coming to x3, n3, n3 is equal to 15. 15 x3 is congruent to 1 mod. So think of x3 number. 15 into 1, 15 does not leave remainder 1 when divides with 11. 15 multiplies 2, 30, 30 does not leave remainder 1 when divides with 11. 15 3 times 45, 45 when divides with 11, 11 4 times 44, so it leaves remainder 1. That means x3 is equal to 15. x3 is equal to 3, sorry. So it's not that. It is very lengthy calculation. Only thing is, once you know the things, you can mentally calculate and you can write very quickly. Next, coming to this expression, first one. This one. So, x is congruent to now a1. a1 is 2. a1, 2. Then your x1, x1 equal to and capital N1 is 33. So I'll multiply 33. This one plus A2, X2, N2. A2 is 2. X2 is 1. And N2 is equal to 55. 
Next is A3. A3 is 3. X3 is 3 again. And N3 is equal to 15. Full modulo. Capital N. Capital N is means product of N1, small N1, N2, N3. It will be, we have to multiply it 5, 3, 11. It is 165. So add it. X is congruent to, first is 132 plus 2, 110 or 210 plus 135. Modulo 165. So if we take the sum, x is congruent to 377. 165. That means I'll divide with 377 with 165. 377 with 165. Equal multiply with 3. So oh, it is 2. It is 330. So it will be 47. So this equals to congruent to 47 modulo 165. So what is the remainder? Remainder is 47. So the answer is 47. X is equal to 47. So the number of ducklings, minimum number of ducklings, of course. Or smallest number of ducklings. It's 47. answer is 47 so thank you for watching thank you for subscribing my channel keep on watching and keep on learning because there is no end of learning